damage output is basically all ILTW. So I don't mind Liquid's draft into this. Their team fight's quite solid. You got to figure they'll be comfortable, and it's going to be much easier for them to find kills because Enigma don't really have anything to play with mind control. Don't mind this bugging the pick too much, just because the build would change up a little bit where you just go for like a Glimmer Cape. You naturally go for Octarine Core quite quickly, so it's more HP. Mm. So you are quickly very tanky and can eat through that damage. It's also a hero that will happily just stand up up front and be that annoying hero that they jump and then suddenly now the rest of the cast coming in. It is just Enigma are playing for that timing. Like we literally just, we describe these teams as full on aggression yeah. and then stack camps wait, play later. It's why Liquid wins games, you know, 35, 40 minutes plus, and mm. Enigma win games much earlier. So I, I think that the tale well, of two stories. Here. Th that'll be the story, I think, mm -hmm. of this game because uh, if you chrono anybody but Pugna, they're going to get decrapped. The slaughter amp, like all the damage disappears. If you hit this timing, you get an Aegis on Luna, he's got BKB. He's huge because he can farm these stacks and jungle so much faster. I think you're going to win. But. The Void gets to level 20 plus, suddenly things start to go Liquid's way. Well, at least uh, I think we can be sure that there will be quite some action in this game. Two people that are going to be very happy with that are commentary team of Cap and Fog. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes we are, Fog. I think this is going to be a fun one because every single time it's the old Liquid Boys Prepare versus the new battle. Liquid Boys. And every single time they played up against each other, Fog, in a best of three, it has gone the full distance. <laughs> yep, that's what we're hoping for. And I mean, we got some exciting stuff coming out here. We've got a Pugna for Miracle. I, I don't even know the last time I saw like Miracle playing Pugna. We got Koiko with the Tiny and Liquid. They've got a lot of comfort. They love playing with Slardar. They used to be a team that picked Void even during some time when he was phasing out and all that. They like the Void AA combo, so they're comfortable with the hero. But I do have to feel a bit, a bit anxious for them. I see a very good group up lineup on the side of Nigma when they hit this timing. You know, Mech Darks here. Pugna is going to be pressuring as well. I think Liquid might be might falter to that if they don't set up perfect team fights with that Void Chrono and that. My Warlock. apologies. So uh, the last you time, I'm not sure if this is entirely accurate, but the last time that uh, Miracle played up battle. Pugna was in uh, 2019 February. Okay. Let's see if I can find it. Match up against uh, Team Singularity. I don't even know what tournaments this is. So yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's ago. been a minute. <laughs> yeah, some time for sure. And you know, there is some potential for him getting burst, you know, just like Panel was saying, tiny snap fire. There is a good amount of actual damage that can just delete him. However, mm -hmm. the battle begins! he's in a good position. He's got a lot of different ways to protect himself too. They've got the darks here in the past too. So a lot of different ways you to guard Miracle. What do you think about Liquid? Um, I feel like this game represents a change of pace from them, uh, considering what they were running at the Singapore Major, which was like three semi-cores, a very fast lineup that usually would get outscaled. Here, they've got Slardar Void. Like, I feel like this is kind of um, somewhat epitome of late game. They, like, they're actually giving Mickey a hard carry to play off of rather than their usual shenanigans. No, I absolutely agree. That's why I was saying, like, I feel like they're going back to their old forms of, like, mm. all right, let's look for these big fights rather than this constant aggression and just having stable Mickey on, like, a jug or something like that. Seeing Mickey eats the whole tag team with a nice little yeah. kind of block to start off. So, I haven't been seeing too much of these uh, double melee with the Dark Seers. It's not been, it's not been, like, doing badly. It just it takes time to be able to build up that pressure. So, glad to see teams are still willing to go for it. I'll we'll see how they do and how much pressure they are able to put onto a faceless void with a warlock behind. I feel like that is that's one of those combos that like used to be warlock specter. You know that was a combo that's just like okay we will endure. But I have to imagine faceless void is going to be even harder to pressure. Yeah, I'm trying to remember the bands because right they they picked warlock and then they even picked darks here right after. So maybe they were going for like okay if you go for the specter, you know we're going to be able to have our own specter later on too and stuff like that. Dark seer versus specter might not be that bad but they actually go for Void instead, so some switch up, perhaps. I can tell you that Spectre was not banned. Okay. So it was still out there, but Nigma did opt to take the uh, Monster Faster rune. I'm, I'm super interested to see uh, this Luna at work and whether or not the we're going to see the Shard pick up. Do you think that's legit? I think with Grimstruck it is. Okay. You can get the double bounces and bottom. Speaking of the Luna... Getting very, very low. ILTW. Be okay, though. 
Nope. We have to mention the power of this lane, right? Snapfire, I know we've all been talking about how it's been... It's kind of been moving to that five position exclusively, but... Damn, with Slardar, this actually sounds like a pretty hot lane. Level three comes around, 100 bonus damage, minus eight armor. Uh, they, they're gonna pack a punch onto this Luna, even if she is one of the higher armor heroes in the game early on. Yeah, it's uh, it'd be a lot easier if she was a higher ranged hero, right? But the fact that she's got that short range means that at any point in time, she's within cookie hopping distance. And we're seeing that effect already. Like, ILTW's only got five last hits right now. And the slaughter is already up to that 10. Taiga and Foxy doing a great job. Very comfortable because we know Tom Foxy absolutely loves slaughter even when it's not meta. He's been playing it. And I'm going to be continuing looking at mid. I think this is where it's going to start getting quite difficult for Koikpa. He's going to have to spend a lot on regen. And this is where Miracle Pugna is able to sort of find crazy amounts of pressure, really. And perhaps even stealing the bounty rune if he pushes it in and going to the opposing side. Yeah, you can already see Koip, uh, like, faring in regen because he knows he's going to be pressured really heavily and he can't afford to just be backed out of the lane. Otherwise, he's going to lose his tower super early. Oh, it's Kuro do Kuro's doing the move. So he's actually the one invading on the Grimstruck to try to steal this bounty run away, or secure it at least with Miracle. Deny it from Koikfa. Oh, they're going to sandwich him, maybe. Koifa, oh, he's going up that high ground. Now nah, he's dead. He's dead, and he's not even going to get the bounty rune for these efforts. Great move from Kuro. And I'm sure Koifa is probably talking to his teammates going, guys, did you did you know he was missing? Did you know he wasn't in lane anymore? And Zania, meanwhile, he's also going to go down. Mike is going to try it and finally does manage to get the bash. He'll uh, take off some of the damage that he received, so support's being traded out in the top lane. Certain. Radiant's top tower is under Huge. Right, the Luna's not farming great anyway. Kuro makes a heads up move, shuts down Koifa, enables Miracle. And as I said, that's that's already a tough, it's a tough lane for Koifa. He's gonna start really falling behind. The tower pressure is gonna start coming out at the bottom. Nope. Still got him with the cookie and the vision. Will allow them to be able to uh, get the final blow on the Kuro. So a little bit of ven vengeance for what happened to uh, Koifa earlier. Speaking of Koifa. He's running. He's not going to be able to stop it. Koifa will be able to secure himself that water rune. I was a bit worried because I see the boots on the Pogna. You get 375 <laughs> moon speed, 300 moon speed, tiny. Koifa. The rune at least. Yeah, they uh, they don't really have the best heroes to rotate around. Time lock pulled back into his doom. What a combo from Nigma, and they're gonna keep the chase up. They do not want to let Insania get the experience for this creep wave, and they'd love to have the extra kill as well. Insania having no tangos to be able to juke his way around here should be kind of stuck and slowly burnt out. Things going very well for Nigma in this game one early laning phase. Dyer's top tower. Even with that bottle, so GH takes the bottle from Mike. Control, grabs the bounty rune earlier. That's why they have so much mana up here to be able to apply that pressure onto the void. Yeah, works out. Luna's still getting pressured. ILTW, yeah. he still is suffering quite a lot here, but some nice big moves from Nigma. Do you think for these kills they can afford for the Luna to have a the worst laning phase up there to three cores rather? Is, uh, we're probably going to see him go down again here. They're going to rely on the Inkswell stun to be able to get ILTW out of here. Boxy not going to go chase him down. And let the Luna live for now. I, I think they can, just because you can... I see he already put the second point in his Lunar Blessing, which might hurt that he didn't save the point for the Glaives, but he can just go Glaive build, and the, the team, right, the, the Enigma lineup, they can fight us for. They don't need yeah. the Luna in all these instances, and they can pick and choose their battles, right? Like Liquid, when they know Chronosphere is up, when they know Snapfire ult is up, when they know Kato and Goffring's up, they're not going to just run into them as far. They got to, like, you know, just play smartly around that if the Luna's catching up. Yeah, big difference from, say, the Faceless Void, who, you know, may be top of CS, but he's also being pressured a bit, having that death. This is a hero that in some ways needs to have a good laning phase, right? Because you're way back into the game. You don't have that flash farming mechanism. Yeah. You, you have to, if you want to get back into the game, you have bad laning phase, you have to get good Chronospheres. You have to actually fight to get back in. Yeah, no, absolutely. He doesn't, he has excellent, <laughs> they have excellent ways with that chrono, absolutely. They just have to be sure they get the right targets inside it. They have to catch Miracle for the most part inside that all the hurt. game. Radiant he's just going to heap it upon it. quickly. Well, we, we did say, uh, I heard the panel talk about the Decrepify, but it's a little different when you've got a huge amount of magic damage you throw inside the Chronosphere, right? Like, I'm not sure if Decrepify is a good idea when there's a Snapfire on the side. Snowball, that's going to stop Boxy's TP. He thought he was going to be home free with the Lucent Beam used, but ILTW, he's laughing because he knew there was a, a trap card in play here.
And he actually, okay, he puts the third point in the blessing. So he just wants to have that high damage wow. when they do rotate to his lane. I mean, if they're grouped up, that build is going to be that much stronger, right? Everybody's yeah. going to have that extra 25. And <laughs> Dark Dark look at Nigma's draft. He's is taking a lot about many that, that timing. They're going to hit a peak timing with like this mech on Darks here with Pugna pushing. And Luna's just going to group up this five. So you see why he's doing Dark's that. Bottom tower and how do you attack. as Liquid break that five, man? Like the, the obvious thing is like, okay, get a good team fight in. But do you feel like they're going to get to a point where they can fight? They just have to dodge and split push? They're just, they're just gonna have to play really according to these cooldowns. It's like, a, and it's it's gonna be really depending on how Mickey gets the setup, because he really is gonna be the majority of that setup. Since so his, I mean, I, I want to say Quaiko is struggling. Quaiko is actually doing decent. Yeah. But it's it's gonna be a lot on, like, a lot of pressure on Mickey to just land that, because it just landed on, like, two or three heroes. Hey, they have fun too. At least we have got Tiny. Like, Quaiko, when he gets blanked, he gets boss heroes. The Chrono, as we used to see. Yeah, that's true. Five to two, as you said, uh, Koifa doing better than expected considering he got ganked and killed early on. Same goes with Mickey, who's actually top net worth to right be. now, even though he that did die certain. early on. But that is kind of what we were saying from the beginning is that in comparison, Mickey's doing very well because ILTW was pressured so much in yep. lane. <laughs> Speaking of this pressure, we see GH as well as Kuroki kind of setting up around mid. Taiga wants to slow down this tower push because mid tower. It's a blaster, too. It's a blast and a half. Yeah. Are they really going to go for this? I feel like if you use the Chrono early, that may just be Nigma straight up pushing down your towers uh, with that cooldown up. But let's see. They're going to try for it. And I feel like you've committed oh. so much. The time walk back down. Cookie Hop gets on top of them. Still hoping for a bash here. And he finally does get it. And they won't have to expand the Chrono Sphere. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Boxy in some trouble here. But oh, nice. Snowball, great reaction there from GH as he gets out of the avalanche, but won't be able to get away from the toss of Boxy, and they're gonna try and burst him down before he can get anything else off. Nigma are gonna have to retreat here and probably going, going to lose Kerr on their way out. A Chronosphere is gonna be used on the mid lane at the same time. Liquid may have a slower lineup here, but they're gonna be keeping their fast pace, getting kills in all three lanes. Great moves, great rotation. The whole team swinging over to get my control actually causes them to be able to swing and catch Miracle in the mid lane. Mickey getting a heads up move with his chrono. And that's pre six on Taiga. Now he'll have Mortimer kisses for the next fight, too. Some really heads up moves coming up from Liquid. And Quikefa should now be enabled to get a pretty damn good timing on this blink dagger off that. Yeah, Dyer's certainly. Tower that being said, it did come, come at a trade off, right? Dyer's the freezing Dyer's Miracle is so far forward. He's taken that mid tower before 10 minutes. Dyer's you know, top a lot of, tower a lot is of under attack. To, to move around the map and just continue pressuring and getting that extra gold. You know, this tower gold, it does add up quite quickly when you are playing with this type of early, under attack. early centric draft with like Luna, Darkseer, Pogna pushing. We'll get some good timings on. It looks like it's going to be like actually a high first. Wood before on the axe. Okay. Dyer's top tower is under attack. you agree attack. with that? The magic damage being the biggest threat in this game right now? Yeah, just because they have the crap, right? So yeah, yeah. Your to top save tower has so fallen. Most of those others. And just tanking, like, the tiny combos. Like, if everybody... I'm, I'm, like, clicking around looking at the heroes. Like, who's got raindrops? Who's prepared for those tiny combos? Yeah. ILTW will certainly have a lot of space to work with, with all, all these early towers being taken. Let's see how well he recovers. And it's just the one point in beam. It's just one, three, three, so now he's got almost the max claims. Tower. They're going to be giving him the majority of the, the safe farm on his side of the map wall. We see Miracle and my control both try to apply as much pressure as possible, especially now that Chrono's down. But they have to be wary. Quick, but he's got the blink. It's really early. Yeah, it is. And they've already smoked up. Koipa and Haiga. Two playmakers of the team. They're going to be able to find Miracle, get on top of him. They're going to make sure to use the Mortimer's Kisses. They want to take absolutely no chance that Miracle can get away. They want to make sure he dies. And my control oh. coverage that they have right now is perfect. The yeah, arcade room, my control, he knows that he's been totally caught. He just tries to throw it on the wall, but that's about as best as he can do here. GH is still looking for a fight because he has the Grimshock behind him, but uh, I feel like this is a little scary. All right, yeah, you will for Get away. He's just shy. It's like yeah. five mana short of having the avalanche as well through this arcane rune, almost getting them three kills consecutively. But war coverage. Uh, they see Miracle playing a little bit too far up. They see the darks here also isolated. And Boxy, he's he's living the dream during those moves. He actually just farms ancients, farms the hard camp. And now he's got a blink too. So double blink initiators and a chrono. 
Liquid have hit quite a good timing here. I actually feel like that's a very underrated and under talked about skill is the ability for a five position, whatever warder you have, to be able to read where the pressure is going to be able to come in. Okay, we're going to be losing our mid tower. We're going to be losing our top tower. Getting defensive vision down preemptively. And that does allow you to be able to find a kill like Miracle there. And being ju and just being set up for it. You know, just Tiger kind of chilling in the area waiting for an opportunity. Liquid now. Or oh, sorry, wow. now. Looking for an actual smoke rotation to try to slow down Mickey because he's starting to get a bit too much farm. You know, he's getting all these kills. He's not getting pressured almost at all. Oh, big, 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 big kill. And they can get in. The silence is going to go out. Mickey can't actually get rid of that silence because this Grepify and nasty combo that we've seen a number of times before. And Nygma put it to good use here. Bottom tower. I love, I really love Grimstroke Pug 90. Like, in just multiple different forms of combos too, right? The like double decrep, double drain. The dire structures cannot be that. Radiant's always bottom fun. tower yeah. is under yeah. attack. Yeah. We'll get some pressure out. Radiant but structures are also fortified with be able to take out the bottom tower and minerals. So it's that's going to be their uh, first tower of tower the game. Net worth very even, six to eight. Nigma doing about like, I don't know, you, you'd probably put this game 50-50, right? Like, Nigma is doing what they need to do, but the pressure is on them to take more and more map control. Absolutely. I'd actually, I'd, I'd maybe give like a slight favor to Liquid just because like these blinks are so early. Like some 13 minute blinks on both attack. mid and the off laner. Your, your baseless void lane is like quite well too. So and maybe giving them the slight edges. They do have that crazy scaling potential. Oh, missed out Ooh. with the stun there. The TP is going to be coming in from the tiny GH is surely caught here. No way out for him. But, uh, the damage that's going to be coming out. This minus armor is going to start. It's going to be ridiculous whenever they connect. The solo crest almost done for Taiga. Yeah, and I think um, one big point is if you, as Nigma, lose too many heroes in a row, they can actually take rogue shot from you. And that that is like a big momentum staller right there. If the enemy team that is a better late game picks up the Aegis, that's rough. Okay. Oh, they got him again. Pull them back in. He's not getting away from the drain. The sounds is there. They're going to throw out the golem, trying to interrupt things. They can maybe still win this fight. Soulbind latching on in. No, Boxy not able to stay on top of Miracle. He's actually getting some heals out. The double suck going off onto the golem there. I actually didn't know you could soulbind onto the golem. I guess it's a hero unit, right? Yeah. I, I mean, he probably clicked the golem then, and it's attached to the other hero, right? Yeah. I guess that's the way he must have done and hey, I guess they can go for their own. Radiant Radiant shot to that. Team looked good down. Died pretty quick. I also want to point out GH has kidnapped my controls bottle the entire game, so never gave it. <laughs> this is uh, mine now. Radiant's middle tower. I thought maybe it would go the other way, that supports are going to be feeding cores bottles, but uh, apparently not. I think oh, Radiant's middle tower. Tower. Oh, 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 A little bit too slow. They do have Mickey here. <laughs> Try and get what pickups they can without using the chronosphere. Mind control is certainly stuck in the pit, and they will manage to get two kills. Looking the for more now. Quite fun boxing. Middle tower. Leading the charge with their blink daggers. Blink's the right position here. He'd actually find Kuro and Miracle, but uh, he'd be pretty far ahead of his team. So Liquid going to give up on that for now, and it's actually Nygma are going to try and get aggressive here. They're going to find the pick off on Insani in the back lines here. And Boxy, he's going to take that challenge. Mortimer Kiss is raining, and they're going to be able to bring down Miracle because the Aegis is on ILTW. So they're going to try and leave ILTW for last here. Bash Chronosphere actually going down. They're going to try and deal with the toss because, again, the extra life. The cookie doesn't do anything, though, inside the Chronosphere. The H-Wall is going to stall off Boxy. And Mickey, he's got to get out now. GH going to try and chase him. Boxy, oh, Taiga. He's, uh, doesn't have a TP, so there's no way out. He's just going to suicide into the tier two. They tried to turn because they got, you know, their Warlock got caught. They tried to go for this big fight, but Enigma, they've got a little bit too much. And ILTW, I believe he just ticks level 13 as that fight's going off when they get the kill. Gets the point in the Eclipse, so he's able to zone them away. Good. That's a fight still coming out right from both sides, but Liquid... Fighting into this unit, we're seeing that Lunar Blessing coming into play. We're seeing just that whole power of where Nigma is grouped up. Even into these big, big team fights, <laughs> Bells of Liquid, they're somehow able to take. Yeah, it's actually two different fights now that, like, a small little mechanical play. They've actually changed some of the fate to Soulbind there on the, the previous team fight, and this one that they, they could have definitely used an additional cookie stun on ILTW, but. 
Sadly, I think he tried to. Yeah. He tried to cookie while he was in the chrono, right? Yeah. So the cookie doesn't do doesn't work. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's un unfortunate for sure. He did yeah. just, so it's still radiant structure up anyway, fortified. but yeah, small little. Small little thing. Observes carnage underway at Radiant's top tower. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Let's see if they uh, are going to be able to take this tier two early. They're not. They're going to back up. Radiant's top tower is uh, under attack. Perfect item for Liquid's, uh, you know, draft and style of this game. The Philosopher style. <laughs> They're trying to yeah. take it to the later stages. Get that Philly up on Insania or on Tiger. Watch that replay again. We'll see the initiation from Boxy. They very easily blow up Miracle here, and that's all fine, well, and good. But ILTW, this is about the time he's pumping out some serious damage, and. Sadly, the uh, cookie that comes in here, not really doing anything for you, so ILTW is just able to get off the Eclipse, and that's kind of that. Yeah, no, I do want to point out uh, just the distance that Nygma can poke and proc from. Loosen team, they've got the stroke of faith, the hug the blast, so they know they can shoot from the distance. Sanya, Dyer's trying to there for a moment. Sanya, Kuroki's uh, uh, still certain. better this game. Since he has a ranged carry, he, mm -hmm. even though he has Tusk, he only has a one point in Ink Swell. He's got four points in Stroke for that ranged spam that they've been doing, and then the Phantom's Embrace, which is so efficient. Tower is under attack. Yeah, I really like this. Uh, he's got the Decrepify. The red damage is super, really insane, super especially if they Decrepify when it goes off. So I, uh, I do like this choice quite a bit. Tower is under attack. Yeah, even the talent, like if he chooses to take the DPS talent, it's, it's like 780 damage when it's maxed fallen. out on Phantom. It's one of the higher burst damages in the game, but I don't think I've seen like anyone take it because the other ones is so value. Yeah. So we have. Um, Liquid, they hit a timing, they got their blink daggers, they took, you know, one, maybe two okay fights, but now it feels like that timing's gone. And I'm Radiant's presuming the next timing is BKBs. I mean, that faceless void feels like it needs one really badly. Oh, God, it's, and he's he's going for the SNY because he's probably just feeling like the leash and all Radiant's this is going to be just devastating for him even if he has attack. BKB because mm -hmm. he's playing versus that Grimstroke. But yeah, it, it's going to be some tough moments for Liquid as this is, this is like the peak time. You know, Aegis, you've got your your group up with Luna, with Pugna, with Darkseer, like these heroes all just, they work so well together. They just have to make sure they're not clumped. The only way Liquid can really take this big fight is a humongous Chrono that just lands the whole entire combo. But if they pick a fight where they're not all together, like exactly at the same time, Nygma's just gonna like insta-kill one hero and move on to the next very quickly. All right, well, one more minute left for that Aegis and uh, he can take the outpost. Yep. They want as they've already taken that mid lane. Not that they need it before 20 minutes, of course, but the passive experience is always nice. Watching Sanya. Just uh, very easily 100 to 0 Yep. And that actually, I, I didn't notice, GH got the blink dagger off that kill too. So now, easier forms of initiation for Nigma. Liquid still has a lot of ways to be able to get onto these targets, but now there's a save and an initiation for Nigma that's going to make it quite a lot harder. <laughs> Tried to vacuum him back in, Nigma. It's kind of that awkward position where you almost want to go high ground just to try and force people back, but it's also inherently very dangerous to even approach that area. So they're not going to go high ground. Liquid are going to be allowed to maintain their uh, current positioning, which is cores farming up side lanes and yeah, generally trying to stay off map. I think going high ground whenever your burst is tiny is always quite scary. You get like one toss back, you have to make the decision. Do we help oh, him or do we ditch him? Look at this triangle vision. They had vision on their own triangle. Again, a great warding technique of just like knowing they're going to be pressuring their side of the map. They have to play side lanes and they have to try and farm somewhere else. Let's get some really nice defensive vision to be able to spot that. Unfortunately, it doesn't actually scale out in a kill here, but Mickey is going to be forced out of that position, rooted away to his side. Tying a nice deny there on the DD with a little shredder. He just doesn't get me clipped. Nigma does sweep them out of their triangle. So now Mickey has to farm in a more defensive position. And Nigma now can probably look to just like claim areas around their wards, just keep protecting their wards, just playing around those. While we do see Liquid just kind of playing in the dark, they only yeah. have what, that one ward down on the bottom right side, and I think the one in the river, which is soon expiring. So that is not not the safest for them. <laughs> so I just did my own little in-person replay, and I, I watched Kuro, and he, he did actually click Soulbind on Boxy earlier, and it, it just oh, automatically wow. latched onto the Golem, so that's... I That's really cool. I did not know that one. Yeah. I, like, there's a lot of times in uh, where I've seen people, like, you click it on a hero, and then it 
Uh, are you clicking on an illusion and it latches to the hero? But the oh, it's top it's tower oh, is under unit. attack. That's, that's really cool. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Five man smoke up from Liquid and no Aegis Dyer's on ILTW. They get the right attack. chronosphere here. Maybe they can change. Fortune is fine. They're gonna be able to get it immediately. The Mortar's Kisses are raining in. They're gonna try and burst down ILTW as quick as possible. The Mortar's Kisses run out as the Toss was able to stall that out. ILTW, a little sliver of HP, and he finally does go down. Mind Control put him back into the wall, but he's certainly dead here unless he gets super lucky and jukes all this out into the trees he goes. Hiding away, but quite fun. He's like a bloodhound, attack. sniffs him out into the trees. Four kills for Liquid off of that team fight. <laughs> Nigma caught with their pants down, not fully ready with that positioning there. They lose the Luna very early on. The Grimstroke gets popped by Koifa. Just a perfect wrap around Liquid, reading this scenario perfectly. That one ward that they had in the river actually kind of caused all that because they saw Nigma swimming up, swimming up and uh, getting that set up there. So they're able to get the wrap around. Now, though, they did expend like everything. So it's yeah. going to be up to Nigma to punish that Bounty. themselves. And so smoke immediately. How far do you push Absolute. this? Like, if you don't find the team fight, do you try and poke the high ground, or what do you do? They're gonna find Taiga with the smoke. Oh, Not a core kill, so it's okay. I think you're just swinging for kills with the with this trio, or maybe maybe with the four of them. You just swing for kills. <laughs> okay. The Luna just deals with pushing out the lanes at the moment. Just keep looking to just claim any type of advantage. Claiming triangle is still a little bit scary, but if they're willing to try, they still have a good opportunity. It looks like they're actually gonna try. Well, you called it. They smoked, found a kill. Smoke go again. Boxy blinking into the river here. He's gonna be chased down, pulled back in by the vacuum as well. So, one pickoff becomes two. Enigma keeping up the pace here. Yeah, Koifa just trying to shove War the bottom lane as fast as possible so he can drive tower. that attention from Team Enigma down there so that they can get more time to be able to have their chrono. They just want to buy time right now and look to be able to take a better fight when they do have those up as GH. He's on the He's going to find him immediately. Walrus punches him, catches him. Koifa pops that haste through. Now he may still be caught, especially since they've got the snowball to see where he's kind of going. Shards, can they block him in? Oh! Barely misses out on that one. Koifa, I believe he's going to be away. Home free. Blinks, TP's out. Very nicely done by him. So it does create a little space. Great space. But look, again, another smoke <laughs> from Team Nigma. Like, they're just like, guys, Chrono and Chaotic oh, offering down. Let's go, go, go. Good. Did they save all of their... Like, how many times do you have three smokes available? I feel like they almost saved them intentionally for when these abilities were going to be on cooldown. Is they're going to find Taiga once again? Yeah. Is a <laughs> yeah. Rosh in about a minute as well. So Liquid will have their, their all their ults are going to be up for that Rosh fight. But Enigma has have effectively punished it. How many kills did they actually get there? That they got three. They got two okay. on Taiga, one on Boxy. Uh, they missed out on the with the kill, obviously. So pretty good for them. Uh, not bad. Oh, okay. pick up the uh, shard pickup for Insania. See Mickey with the uh, Scotty next item. Leave. Does Luna have uh, her BKB? She does. She's okay. Very, very far. Almost level 18 too. Mickey has hit 18. Oh, so he's a little bit, a little bit ahead on that front at least. <laughs> and he does have protection. He does have Manta to at least cover him a little bit versus the phantoms and the silences and the decreps and all that that will be annoying him a lot. Illusion. Okay. Miracle. So he's gone to all positions. Octarine to tank up and just how valuable the item is because it builds up from that uh, Aether Lens and then Blink. Yeah. And he's even going to go back for a Glimmer Cape. We saw there the difference in uh, the goal that they're getting from these bounty runes. Nigma, they're up by 5k. Half of that is purely coming from the fact that they have gotten a lot more bounty runes than Liquid, obviously, from all that map control they've got. Yep. Liquid now. BKB is up on Boxy, so he has a much easier time just getting into the back lines, which, you know, if we if we see Liquid get the hit, top like, hit their stuff properly, attack. when they can get these opportunities to wrap around, they still have good shots in the fight. They just a lot harder for them to actually has get fallen. through this if annoying Dark Seer who runs right here. He would never run. fall! Yeah, my control is, is currently trying to do that uh, exact job, just kind of like 
Running interference, being on the front. Liquid, they're, they're gonna try and sneak in. on by here. They know they're coming though. They're immediately gonna get a stun off. Mickey's gonna be silenced here. Mickey in a bit of trouble and he's gonna pop the Manta and it goes back for mind control while Boxy ended up going in. GH is trying to finish off Taiga here, but the heal is going to prevent that as uh, he's gonna be left on the river side of things while Boxy, he's been creating a ton of space there. Everybody else was pushed Fire's away from tower. this engagement. Used to Even be. the buyback that coming in from mind control because they know they really cannot afford to give up this Roshan. Mika just, he just puts his body out there. He's like, all right, my control wants to be a tanky boy. I'm way tankier at this point. 2800 HP. He's also got the nether shot. He didn't get so much information for his team, and they don't have to use any ults. So now for this next fight, they have that, and they know my control does not have buyback. They catch this Darkseer. That will break most of the team fight that's coming out from Nigma because he is so crucial to Nigma's team fight. Yeah, pretty good play by, um, by Mika, as you said, both of the positioning and he, he seems to be holding on to the Chronosphere a lot. He is just not yeah. expending that very easily. It's, I think the only time he's really been using it, right, was the Miracle Radiant Kill mid and then ILTW for those attack. other times. He's got his, his target priority for sure. Liquid. If they can catch him, perhaps before he pops BKB, Mika is going to be initiated on first. Snowball chains done pretty heavily to Mortimer's kids is raining in and he didn't get off the BKB. A hefty amount of damage coming in, but it's actually about half HP. ILTW will turn now with Eclipse. They've got to be able to get away from this. Magic Gambit is raining in. Taiga may be left for dead, but Mickey's going to be okay for now. Now they go back in. Boxy with the BKB. Stalking the back line. They want Miracle and they want him back, but they decrepify stalling things out. He is allowed to life drain, so they're going to go for ILTW instead. Koipa tossing Miracle enough in the air. He says enough of that, but Miracle's actually still alive. Essence Ring, another round of decrepify. He's trying to do it for as long as he can, but ultimately he's got no more backup left. He stays alive admirably for a very long time there, Radiant but Trump Liquid, they easily trounce the rest of Nigma in that team fight. And now, because they're Radiant smarter, they actually lost nobody in attack. this fight. Radiant they can go straight for Roche. Tower. And actually, doing that, they're actually they going to run for my control. Oh, yeah, they found him. Koifa. That was, uh, I guess that lane ward right there on the left must have spotted mind control. So now they're going to be able to get, oh man, second Roshan is such a huge objective. Now that uh, you also get the shard on top of that. Much like Cordwood. And now Axis. Switch away that their heroes all work, but they scale. Hard hard and they was going to start having a lot of problems now going forward. Yeah. Last fight kind of set everything for the team. You know, the Chrono lands, the Snapfire gets his land. Luna's still He's alive, under but attack. Liquid's able to reset. Then they have another round of big ultimate. It's the chaotic, chaotic offering coming in. I told for the whole time, he just he sat on Miracle. He kept controlling him over and over again and just, like, toss Avalanche, reset, come back, toss Avalanche, reset. They like, didn't let Miracle really do much in the fights at all. Do you agree with this choice? Uh, them giving the shard to Mickey, so now he has the reverse time walk? <laughs> sure. You used like that? Yesterday, too. <laughs> you can do some fun juke plays. You know, you can dodge some spells. Yeah. I feel like the the cast range is is actually what makes it legit. Dyer's that, that bottom is tower is fair. under yeah, attack. The cast range definitely just makes it worthwhile as Chrono. I mean, it is everything. I actually I, I forgot that it gave four hundred. I thought it was wow, a <laughs> Yeah, dude, why, why, why is it four hundred and it gives a second ability? <laughs> I feel like Ice Rock's going insane with these shards for carries, man. He's yeah, taking that's, many that's wounds. Actually, quite crazy. It's like here's the art of box. This is really valuable too. So I mean, yeah, absolutely best one for Void. under attack. He's like, go ahead. Uh, you've got a new ability. Oh, and and my is two seconds cooldown or increased cast range as well. Dyer's it's like bottom tower is under heal attack. and strong dispel and do extra damage. <laughs> <laughs> Dyer's that. bottom tower has fallen. It definitely Your feels like these uh, these shards are no longer Dyer's like this bottom tower fun, like slightly optional thing, but but they're very rapidly becoming core to some of these heroes. Yeah, for some, for sure. But then there's other ones like, you know, you look at Pugna's and you're like, in very rare situations, is this going to be yeah. going to Speaking of Pugna, Miracle, yeah, he's Bottom very tower far forward here. Attack. That was crazy. That was insane. <laughs> Mickey. Miracle, or Mickey's got, he's got Chrono at the ready. Tide is looking for a hundred. Bottom yeah, tower is under attack. He almost has Scotty too, so I feel like in some ways they, uh, It'd be nice for them to just chill out and fill that up. Uh, Koifa does have his Aghanim Scepter, so now the Tiny can pump some serious damage in to the Chronosphere as well. We're going back to the point where you probably need a Decrepify to save those units from the Tree Volley that's going to be raining in. Boxy currently hunting with an Invis Room. 
Level 18 too, so we've got max corrosive haze that applies with his slithering crush. Oh, oh boy, that wasn't even a bash hit. That was just a regular one. That was like a third of his hit. HP. Oh no. <laughs> Right, so the oh, okay, uh, okay. Oh, that yeah, makes I sense. Know, I was like, <laughs> I, was like <laughs> I was like, wait, what? I was like, that was not bad. <laughs> that damage was insane. Oh, oh, back and Mika, he finds himself a mind breaker, but he just he's still. Oh, they found ILTW. He's gonna be forced to pop his BKB, but they've got a solar crest on Boxy, so he is swinging really fast. And they're gonna drop the golem here for Boxy to try and get one more hit in for the get that bash. ILTW away to the trees. There is an escape point out of this area, and he will manage to use that to barely get back to the base until now. Mickey's here with the Chronosphere. Oh, another Glimmer King, and they're actually getting the Light Drain as well. Uh oh, Liquid. This is gonna be a little difficult until ILTW. Is he finally gonna stop? He is. The magic damage is there. Grimshoke's gonna be swallowed up by the Boxy and combo here miracle Radiant and gh are left to try and hold the attack. base by themselves tower is yeah, under like, attack. Wait, i can't hit your threes oh yeah your threes are still up Oops, we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> great chase forward liquid really catching their stride this game Tires, pretty much all the team fights that they chose to take have been the ages point where they jumped the loon initially but besides that Perfect connections, pretty much from everybody. And quite for, I mean, the a really solid performance on the tiny after a really tough battle. Tower has and fallen. ILTW, kind of a, a rough game for him, mostly because Liquid is doing a good job hunting him down. Tower is under attack. Yeah, they're always getting on the targets that they need to. They're always jumping onto these backline targets and these double blinks and the chronosphere is just that big coverage and chaotic coverage. It's enough for them. I'm beginning to think, Fog, that uh, Faceless Void, I mean, falls. the way um, OG used it rises. with uh, amplifying him up with all that attack speed, now we're seeing Liquid amplified via Corrosive Haze, like, uh, it really seems like Faceless Void as just, just a right-clicking hero is, is really top tier right now. Yeah, he's just back. You just have to be very cautious. And that's, I think that's the biggest thing that I noticed from Liquid in the early game was just like holding the chrono, right? Like yeah. you have to wait for the right opportunity, the perfect opportunity. Getting a single kill in this type of game, it's not going to work because you're playing versus such heavy group up. You need to wait for the perfect opportunities. And <laughs> they really have done that. Like Nigma has just been constantly on the prowl, constantly on the hunt with these folks trying to really? punish and split up Liquid you when they don't have cooldowns. That. But Liquid, for the most part, they've been cool as a cucumber, waiting for this to come back up. 40 seconds for Chrono. Look how safe they are. <laughs> Sitting around their tier fours, Insania using chat wheel lines. Like, he's like, guys, we know. We know you're five man smoking. We can smell a, uh, a desperation get out of our base smoke. And uh, we'll see if Liquid, in turn, are going to do something Radiant similar here. Tower is under and attack. who's going to end up winning out on the initiation fight? Because it feels like that's, that's the biggest thing, right? It's like whoever gets the right kind of initiation here, and it's mostly been Liquid. Jump straight up. See something? Gets a little vision. Backs away. Now ILTW outside of position here. Already down to half health. They're going to use the shards to block the entrance off. Miracle will use his blink dagger. Time dilation on cooldown now. He's still going to go for it, though. The Chronosphere opportunity is here. Immediately gets stunned. Actually pushed away by Miracle as well. We're on the crowd. ILTW going to be targeted here with the Corrosive Ace on him. He's pop EKB. He has a butterfly, but he's being shredded by this right click damage. He can't even get off of the clips. He's just done for it. He doesn't have buyback either. Nigma. Oh, dear. Disappears. I mean, these are the tiny and the faceless void are doing so much damage thanks to the corrosive haze. Uh, I'm beginning to wonder, like, why aren't more people picking Slardar like VSJ has been asking for? I have to agree. Axe would never win. They still have Chrono. They didn't actually even have to use him in the fight. Mickey just beat his fight. Yeah. I mean, he's even rewind really well. He keeps on getting fish, and now he's going to make the commitment here. Okay, LCW's not buying back. Let's go ahead and take down Miracle. Oh. Slight pause here, as it uh, looks like we had uh, somebody's PC froze, but... I crashed as well, actually. Oh, really? It was just them. Yeah, I, I was like, hey, was it me? Is it them? What happened here? Everyone's just standing still. <laughs> Well, I uh, I have to wonder if uh, Nigma are perhaps considering a GG call. They still have the tier twos up on the side lanes here, so even you know they're gonna lose this fight and stuff, and they're probably gonna give up their mid lane. Of 
Eric's, but they can hold on if they want to and see if Liquid wants to hit some tier fours or something like that. Liquid just kept cruising these last few, like, three, four team fights in a row. They get just tanky. He's too big. The fact that your Void can just time walk in over and over again like this and you can't punish it, just says everything. It's a 4,000 health Void with cheese. Yeah, I like his build too. It's a very tanky build, right? He built uh, Manta to, to help deal with the Phantoms Embrace and the Decrepify. Uh, just a, a value Sanj to be able to deal with the, uh, you know, various stuns, nice status resistance. And now a Scotty, so 4,000 HP almost. Yeah, it looked a little, it looked a little scary, right? Because he went Maelstrom and then he went like Sange and he started, he got killed like twice and they uh -huh. went S and Y. But then when he disassembles, it all starts to make a lot of sense. This is, this is some good stuff from Liquid, just being able to take this fight. Enigma, yeah, this, was, this was a very timing-based line of really wanted to tower. get an advantage and keep pressing that advantage, but Liquid didn't really ever allow that to happen. I think the highest it ever went was, what, 5k gold lead? I don't yeah. think the experience ever even went into Enigma's favor, so... Yeah, Liquid taking all these heads-up fights, and it's it's around that vision, right? Like, I noticed like, a few times they did have vision where they got these big wraparounds was huge for them. Dang. Yeah, certainly. It also feels like um, Luna is just, am I wrong in saying, I feel like she's pretty hard countered by um, just, mm -hmm. just having these, like corrosive haze makes it so, like her one her one idea is like, okay, she at least has a lot of agility, even if her HP pool is squishy. But then like that all gets taken away, so she's being shredded by physical damage. Yeah, still feels like the same, you know, the same problems that Luna's always had, at least from what we've seen in this game, right? You're just, yeah. You're kind of fragile. You're this carry hero that Dyer's you get collapsed tower on, which is going to happen. Attack. You're going to get collapsed Radiant's on, especially from the strap. Tower is you under still attack. just die. You have to be playing at such a far advantage. It feels good. I, I don't even know if Dyer's he was actually had a void almost at all this game, right? He was actually like neck and neck. Yeah, and it helped that Mickey was able to exit the laning phase top net worth. And yeah. observes carnage under then he didn't really get picked off. A whole lot. Okay, telescope, spell prism. Those are two different nice items for a miracle. Top tower is Not under bad. attack. <laughs> everyone's uh, everyone's on their toes with the, with uh, Mickey around, man. He keeps on jumping in, and they're like, "Oh, is this the time? Is he gonna go for the chronosphere?" He's got it up now. It's finally off cooldown. Misery. What's our war creation? Now with the spell prism and the off. You gotta be careful, that butterfly doesn't protect you against those tree hits from Decrepify for a moment, but look at this, that damage, the Fatal Bonds set up off of a nice Chronosphere, Insidia Flex, three of the kills, and Mickey will get the other two, the friendship duo that has gone through the test of time from Heroes of New Earth to now Dota 2 stays as strong, look at those two lads, as they're able